For more, Dr. Mohammad Sharul Mohammad Nadzir joins us from Selangor. He is a senior lecturer for atmospheric science at the National University of Malaysia. Good evening, Dr. Sharul. Uh, then no two ways about it. I mean, it's a bleak forecast for prolonged uh, dry seasons linked to the southwest monsoon. And for this dry season, it's, it's expected to continue all the way till uh, October. Uh, one of the biggest risks here is that we're going to see this uptick in forest fires, perhaps in peatland fires too, and the, the haze that will come with it. What can be done about this early shot across the bow that we've been given though? Yeah, thank you, Don. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, today, hot in Malaysia is around 35 degrees for today. Yeah, uh, this is what uh, the primary concern is the increase of the likelihood of droughts, uh, which can have a severe implication for agriculture and water resources. So uh, the reduction of the rainfall, uh, it will affect uh, a lot of uh, agriculture activities and open burning and hot spot increases. Uh, at certain areas. So this is what we are worrying and it will cause uh, a major catastrophic uh, uh, happen uh, in this uh, Malaysia and uh, neighbor region. Dr. Sharul, monitoring those hot spots is going to be key in all of this as to how we cope with the increased haze risk that we're potentially going to see. Uh, the ASEAN Specialized Meteorological Center that, that uh, gave out this report has said that hotspot activities in the region, that they are still subdued, but it's, it's, it's cold comfort in a way. Uh, you know, there have been 14 such hotspots detected on May 27th, then another mm. 13 uh, May the 28th. We can't be complacent about mm. this because things could quickly escalate, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Uh, this is because of the, uh, you know, the increase of the temperature during the El Nino. And if you remember back in uh, 19, 1998, it's the worst uh, El Nino. Uh, and then followed by 2014, uh, El Nino incident occurred in uh, in Equatorial. So this hot spot, basically, uh, of course, we can't uh, control. But uh, the most uh, important is that... Um, uh, the, the government uh, in South Asia is need to uh, promote uh, uh, cooperation in terms of uh, enforcing regulation in prosecuting illegal activities such as land clearing through burning and can deter the uh, occurrence of haze. And uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is uh, uh, an agreement called uh, Asian Transboundary Haze Agreement. This is, will provide a framework for cooperation and can be utilised uh, by uh, uh, the government in Malaysia, Singapore, or nearby region to enhance the collaboration, the collaboration between, between the South Asian country. You're right, Dr. Sharl. We do have those agreements. We do have the Transboundary Hayes Act as well, which penalizes those companies which are perhaps at the cause of peatland forest fires and so on, and, and, just, how, and just how badly they affect uh, the atmosphere in the region. It's been very difficult mm -hmm. to enforce this particular act, though, as governments around ASEAN yeah. uh, will attest to, we haven't had the changed behavior that we've, we'd hoped for. What more can we do? Yeah, yeah, you're right, Don. Um, I think, um, first of all, uh, the whole uh, citizens uh, in this Southeast Asia need to be um, uh, increased their awareness in terms of, uh, especially uh, in terms of uh, air quality level. In terms of uh, the emission from industrial area, um, you know, the increasing, like for example, in Malaysia, the increasing of numbers of vehicles that basically worrying us. Uh, it happened actually uh, after COVID-19, uh, the increase of the, the, the numbers of uh, people uh, uh, buying the cars. And this, this is basically will uh, alert us what will happen uh, on this uh, 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 this emission during this uh, uh, El Nino event because uh, the greenhouse gases uh, will keep warming, uh, uh, you know, uh, our areas, and uh, the the additional of this uh, El Nino impact. So um, it's all about uh, um, the awareness or the mentality of uh, 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 our people uh, need to be uh, uh, alert and, and educate and um, try to enforce, especially uh, you know the industrial players and so on. So I think if we have this kind of uh, you know, uh, 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 networking or helping each other, uh, all the citizens uh, in uh, 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 Southeast Asia, it would be, uh, it can help uh, in terms to uh, uh, reduce 
the panic uh, uh, during uh, uh, this uh, warm season. Yeah, we need those early precautions. We need those mitigation measures as well, Dr. Sharul. Uh, we, we've got, uh, uh, we've been advised that that's actually happening here in Singapore now. We're, we're preparing uh, for more transboundary haze uh, in the coming months. Do you hope to see more coordination perhaps between governments? I know that there may well be this small delegation coming from Malaysia over to Singapore to begin to discuss this at more depth. Are you hopeful that they will actually achieve something? Yeah, yeah, I think um, um, the collaborative efforts uh, among countries can focus on several key areas. For example, like um, strengthening the monitoring and early warning system can aid in uh, identifying uh, the fire hotspot and taking timely action. And I think, secondly, um, uh, the, the sharing information and coordinating uh, firefighting efforts uh, can help and respond effectively to the fire incident. Um, I think probably uh, the last the last one that I can uh, you know give is uh, the implementing of uh, sustainable uh, land and forest man management practices can reduce the risk of fires. And um, yeah, as as I said previously, I think uh, the promote the promoting of cooperation uh, enforcing regulation through uh, Asian transboundary haze agreement uh, can be uh, 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 can be utilized uh, to enhance the collaboration between. Uh, um, you know, uh, Southeast Asian country. Yes, the large, the large amounts of peatland forests uh, need to be protected, that, those in Malaysia as well as Indonesia. Dr. Sharul, thank you very much for that. Dr. Mohammad Sharul Mohammad Nadzir there from Salam. Thank you. Thank you.